Good morning YouTube and the internet. Today I'm going to be using my bore gauge to measure the bores and maybe also the main journals, uh, the main caps, the mains passage, whatever is the correct term, uh, on the engine to see where I'm at there. That gives me the final measurements for bearing selection. Still seeking advice on the one low main journal diameter. Um, I certainly hope the advice isn't been it because then I've got no cranks to build an engine out of. Now, I've been playing with this for about an hour and I could not make this damn thing work. And I was getting angry and annoyed and yelling at it. Brand new battery. So I grabbed the old battery out of my car remote and now it works. So uh, reading the book it says it's a low voltage problem and the buttons don't work so brand new battery out of the packet literally took it out of the packet to insert it in here I bought the batteries two weeks ago and the battery in this came out of the same pack well it's in now and there I bought a twin pack because they happen to take the same battery so I bought a flat battery apparently which nearly had me about ready to pack this up and ship it back but just before I did that, I thought I'd double check. So, now I'm going to go and reread read the book again and see if I can figure out how to make this thing work. It's much easier with just with an analog gauge on them, but uh, the digital one should be the way of the future. Let's hope it works. Okay, so what I've got here is my micrometer set up in the vise very gently wrapped in rags to protect it set at 86 millimeters or three point something inches I can't remember uh, but I set it off the number on the screen so reading the instructions it says to set your thing uh, set calibration size ok that's done short press 0 to turn on display it's on short press M min blinks I don't see anything blinking set the ball gauge into setting ring in this case micrometer uh, weigh the ball gauge wiggly the ball gauge will find the minimum reading uh, no that's not worked ok let's start again Starting again, press zero, turn it on, it is on. Now, set size, done, calibration, no, that's that, yep. Well, setting size is uh, putting the correct anvil on here. So this is an 85 with a one millimeter spacer that's hidden under there, which is 86 millimeters, and our bore is 86, so should be pretty right um, short press 0 to turn on the display I just did that short press M min blinks oh yep yeah. okay so down the bottom left min is blinking on the screen M I N uh, ball gauge enters a minimum reading tracking mode insert the, insert the ball gauge into the setting ring and sway ball gauge wiggly. Uh, this one's got to go first. So by moving it around, we should find the minimum on the sweep. Okay, min it, it found it pretty much straight away, I think. 
the reading is minus 0.278 on the display. I don't know what that unit of measure is because these are multi it's a multi unit capable item. Let's carry on. Take the piece out of the bore gauge, press cow button, CCC appears, long press, cow button which is calibrate, CCC appears then disappears, calibration is finished. Yeah, so CCC came up on the screen and then a second later it went away. Short press start. Min blinks uh, and ball gauge enter into measuring mode. Insert the ball gauge into the workpiece and sway the ball gauge wiggly. It's actually what it says here. I don't know if you can read that, but it says wiggly. I'm not making that shit up. Um, the ball gauge will find the minimum reading automatically. The reading is the difference between the workpiece setting ring, which is well, which in this case is my um, micrometer, uh, between the workpiece and that. If there is a um, what are those things called? Quote the quote marks. Can't, that's not the right name. In front of the reading, the workpiece is smaller than the ring. Otherwise, the workpiece is larger than the ring. The ring, being, they keep referring to a setting ring, which is a calibrated hole to stick this in, which I don't have. Okay, so let's go and have a play over on the block and see if I can measure a hole. Okay, that seems to be working. Uh, the unit of measurement is millimetres. So now... Start measuring. So we sway this. Make sure it's nice and square. And it has automatically measured the sweep. And so there's no there's no asterisk in front of uh, asterisk the quote marks in front of the number. It is 0 0.076 millimeters smaller than 86 doesn't seem right does it <laughs> so um, but that's just a test to get the functionality of the tool what I'll have to do is triple check that I had the measurement right over there on the um, uh, on the micrometer for the calibration because that's that's the most important bit if you don't get the calibration bit correct then you're not going to get any accurate measurements on your on your job at all so, I'll do that now, I'll turn this off, I'll go through that process again, I'll have a play, I'll make sure I've got it spot on, and then I'll come back and I'll show you actually measuring the thing. Now that it is working, after all the hassle with the battery, um, it's good to know it does function. So, uh, yeah, I'll go and have a play, make sure it's doing it right, make sure I'm doing it right. Well, YouTube and the internet, I've been playing with this for the best part of three hours. I couldn't get it to measure correctly, but the problem was what I was calibrating it against. I'd actually, I kept mismeasuring this. So, um, this seems to work just fine. I've taken a couple of preliminary measurements. It's enough to tell me what I want to do. Um, but I will, it's just, it's dark now and I'm hungry. I'm going to go have some dinner. Um, so I'll show you shortly, like which will be tomorrow night in real life, but it'll be in a couple of minutes for you, um, how to measure the ball and what the results are and what that means. But for now, I'm, I'm going to take a chill pill, I'm going to have a beer, have a sit down, have a 
chill out, have some feed, go to bed, got work tomorrow. But now I'm happy. The tool works properly. This is now set correctly. Um, I, I, yeah, a silly mistake, and I made it twice, which is very frustrating. Uh, but you know, if you ma everyone's human, everyone makes mistakes. The key thing is to not believe ridiculous results, and to keep rechecking and rechecking and rechecking your steps until you find the problem. You don't just turn around. In my case, with this, and go, oh, I guess the bore is smaller than it came from factory by 0 0.052 of a millimetre. No, it's not. There's something wrong. Either the tool doesn't work, or you've set it up incorrectly, or what you calibrated against is incorrect, in my case. And just because you checked it once before, doesn't mean you didn't do it wrong twice. So, measure ten times, build once. Oh, that's my advice on my engine build coming through, surely. Yes, it is. Alright, so armed with the information, I'm one step closer to making something happen. I don't need to take those measurements that I'm going to show you to make the decision I need to make. I've taken enough measurements to make that decision. All I need to do now is get a second opinion on the crank. Uh, my first advisor has agreed with my course of action which is to grind all of the mains down on the good one to match the small one and then only give that one a polish and buy the bearings to suit which makes perfect sense to me to do that I do have to using the ball gauge on that motor double check the um, the main recess whatever the hell it's called I, I, I can't remember the right name for it what do they call it in the book Crankshaft journal diameter standard. It doesn't tell me a lot, does it? Anyway, happy days. We've got some progress. That's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good news. It's good data. I can move forward with what I've got. And tomorrow night I'll record doing that. And that'll all make this video. I think it won't be too long. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get some, get some more progress happening. Let's get this car built.